All right, guys. As always, we're back on the Reinvent You Drip podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Klazowski, and today we're joined by the real billion dollar baby. <laughs> I like that. I like Three that. Three-time <laughs> world champion, Marine <laughs> Shea. And we can't forget my co-host, Adam Reich. Hey. So, What's up, guys? <clears throat> Episode five. If, you, if you're not familiar, I'll let Maureen give a little introduction, but um, she was the sparring partner uh, during the shoot for the Billion Dollar Baby. Million. Which, million. But you could call it Billion. I Fuck like it. That. Billion. Billion. <laughs> I knew We're, you were calling me the Billion Dollar Baby. I was like, Bill, <laughs> Billion is the real, like, new million nowadays. The new million. So Inflation. Like, what, year, and, you know? what year was the movie? Um, 2005. All right. So, so we, we I, I think it was 2005. Oh, 2004. I don't even remember. It was. I know. I turned pro in two thousand five, so it might have been. It's a sad movie. It is. A lot of people don't. don't if really you haven't like seen it. it, well, people don't realize that. Like, it's a it good was, movie, but it's sad. But as But you shit. realize it was actually like Clint Eastwood does a lot of these controversial movies. So originally, it was supposed to be about euthanasia. Like the basis of the movie was euthanasia, but her boxing just kind of captivated people. And I think seeing a female and people were like, "Oh man," and people thought it was real. Like I've had people ask me, "Like, is that about your life?" And I'm like. No, I'm not. A lot not. of people assume that. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot. But, but I get it. You know what I mean? But I'm like, no, it was based on a, um, a short story uh, by um, a cut man. But the book was called Rope Burn. So it's like a, a bunch of short stories. And that was one of them, Million Dollar Baby. And then it just goes into, you know, everything that happened. But the, the whole premise was really euthanasia, you know, because of what happens. Not to ruin it for everybody, but... Um, well, but if you haven't seen it, it's sad. It yeah. is good. Well, it's good because she captivates you. Like she really, and the thing is, like working with Hillary, we worked together for like six months mm -hmm. in Gleason's gym in Brooklyn, where I trained, mm -hmm. and it was um, it was great because she really committed to the role. So if you've seen any of her movies, a lot of people didn't know she had won an Oscar already before that movie because she did Boys Don't Cry, and if anybody saw that movie, that was about she was um, she actually for that film she lived like a boy. Like I that was practicing that like for yeah. the role. Like she commits to these roles. She did like P.S. I Love You. I saw that afterwards. And I mean, I like rom-coms, but like after seeing how in depth she got with these roles, I was just like, I couldn't watch a rom-com or like a sci-fi with her. Because you know? your image of her was you already, already. It was so is. like, yeah, because she's so, yeah. But Some she's people like can't good. be that versatile. Like I think Will Smith is one actor that can like play different roles and yeah, you respect yeah. him in each well, of them. Well, then they, but become, some ca people, yeah, they yeah. become character actors. And then yeah. you're like, oh, you, you have to be that role. You yeah, have to yeah. play that person. Yeah, you have to play some that person. Some people are always the bad guy. They're always the villain. They're always... Yeah. The some people sell it too good that you always remember them as that person. So I got a funny story. So you guys watch the podcast. Let's give the introduction. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> people don't know. It's people don't know. Really then we, then we Who can get are crazy. you? Don't worry. I just got stories. Who is Marine Shea? Fast forward 20 years. Here we are. She is... So yeah, so I'm I'm yeah I'm a professional boxer. Um, I'm actually I'm a, I have four titles, but I have two world titles. But I'm going for the third. Um, I've been boxing for more than half my life. I mean, 20, 26 years I've been in the game since I was seventeen. Um, you can do the math. Um, but I, I mean I yeah I'm from the Bronx, born and raised in the Bronx. Um, I never thought I'd be boxing. That was probably like. Irish father, Mexican Irish, mother. Yes, Irish Mexican. My dad was a retired. He was a Marine, a retired detective, NYPD. Um, yeah. Just fighting in the blood. Just it's there. The Bronx, yeah. Irish and Mexican. I mean, yeah, it's a no brainer. It. We <laughs> said, yeah, that's a given. You grew up in the Bronx, you didn't know how to fight. Yeah. She came out yeah. with yeah. boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah, you were either much. dead or but in But then, jail. like, my parents asked me, they're like, and my mother was like, why, why boxing? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> but I was always like this. I was always super aggressive. I was even from like being in the womb, my mother would tell you. Like, I was super active, um, even when not to get too. Uh, TMI, but even when she gave birth, like I went up the birth canal twice and they had oh, to have really? an emergency C-section. So okay. whether that has something to do with my personality, I don't know, but... Did you used to get in trouble? You said you got, you got kicked out of... I got kicked out of high school. High school. I, you know what it was? It wasn't even like I got into fights. I just didn't take bullshit. I never did. Yeah. So I was that person. I was friends with everybody. Like, I really get along with everybody. There's nobody that, you know... I accept people for who they are, but if I don't like you, you're going to know I don't like you, and I probably will confront you about it and just be like, listen, I have... But I'll observe first. I've always kind of been like that. In school, I just don't think I fared well in a uh, all girl Catholic school because you know there's a lot of drama and there's cattiness and I, I just don't do that so I had a lot of guy friends growing up so which is why you know I think and I grew up with cousins I had boy cousins my brother was 10 years older than me I got roughhoused a lot as a kid by my brother and his friends mostly his friends but like you know I had to kind of like stand up for myself and, I and was for you guys that don't know how I know Maureen her actual her boyfriend is my boxing coach and her boxing coach uh, yeah. Derek Santos mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, just from watching Marine in the gym, I'm confident <laughs> she could beat me up. 
and Derek up, even though he doesn't want to. He'll never admit it. <laughs> but he behaves. He behaves. Now. He knows. He knows. It must. I t- I, well, he I, knows my weaknesses too, because my coach. So I got to be careful. I never want to tell him, you know, that I think your girlfriend could beat you. Because you know, one time he, a couple times he's made the comment like, "You'll find out why I'm the coach." You know, I've heard oh, him yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys why I'm the coach today. You know, I'm going to show you why she's the girlfriend. I go. I go back and I I, I sparred with him one time and I I always bring up this overhand right that I caught him with. I caught him with this overhand right. He swears it, it, I didn't land it. But I'm like, listen, just give me something. But I definitely caught him with an overhand right. That's fine. I like, but how could down. I not? You know, because I gotta write tall. this stuff he's down. He's going to watch this and he's going to be like, <laughs> I'm gonna like shake sh- his head. Marine with the overhand right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Do no. that when you're done with your training. It's got to be hard, though. Like, you know, I would imagine, mm-hmm. like, you know, if I'm like arguing with my girlfriend and I'm like have that in the back of my head, like, <sighs> Could get physical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But you know, it's like I, I, but I'm like not like that at all outside of it. Like, yeah. I, like I said, I'm aggressive, and I'm. I say I'm confrontational. Like, yeah. not that I look for confrontation. I'm just not. I'm just not somebody who shies away from it. So if I need to, and I think it's how I was raised. Like my father, I was saying, my father was a retired detective, and he was old Irish Catholic. You know, my dad, he passed when he was 80. So he was older. He, they had my brother who was 10 years older than me. So you know, with that being raised like that, he raised me like a human. And I don't see that a lot today where it's like my father raised me for whatever life threw at me. Like yeah. I was going to have to deal with it. You know what I mean? So no matter what happened, I was like, okay, well, this is what – doesn't matter that I'm a girl. It doesn't matter. It matters this is – you're human. This is life. Deal with it. And what are you, it what are you currently doing? Um, getting an IV sitting here. No, no. Like, <laughs> like to let them know. Like, so we talked about who you are, okay. obviously, how you – you okay. know, got up in the sport. Yep. Like, what's your current goal? Obviously, you said you're going for the third world title. Well, I'm going, fighting. I want to unify. So at 122, I want to unify the world titles. It's really interesting because, like I said, I started at 17 boxing. I went amateur when I was 24. Uh, I mean, I was amateur at 21 till I was 24. And back then, you got to understand, this is going back. Um, or late. I started in 1998. So women's boxing, I mean, you knew Christy Martin. Leila Ali had fought Jackie Frazier. And so women's boxing was like nothing, you know, and the million dollar baby happened and it got a little bit of traction. And then you had like the UFC and and Ronda Rousey and things like that started moving it. But um, I went pro in 2005 and I kind of used the million dollar baby fame that I got because I was being interviewed. And I think a lot of people it was really interesting for me because I I didn't expect any of that when I was just being partnered with the with with Hillary to help her. And trained with her. And I think Hector Roca was my trainer at the time in Gleason's. And he partnered me with her because he knew I had control. Like, I wasn't going to hurt her. You know, I wasn't going to go in and beat her up because I was always I was, I was a student. So I was always trying to learn and figure things out. And it wasn't uh, like me trying to beat somebody up until I fought. Yeah. You know, it was different. I knew how to, how to make that switch. Some fighters know how to do it. Some fighters don't. It, it's, um, it's, it's just very psychological. So you were, you were a pro already when you worked... In the movie? Um, no, I was or amateur. I was amateur. amateur. Yeah, I turned pro in 2005. So it was like after the filming of the movie, after I got this fame, that's when they were like, you know, that's when we, we turned pro because you know we kind of wanted to ride that wave. Gosh, you know, slingshot the career a little exactly. bit. Exactly, yeah. and, it, and it worked. It helped. I mean, I was I was, did a lot of. I mean, it's if Instagram was around back then, I'd have you know tons more followers, and it would be so different because yeah. I was on CNN, I was on um, ESPN, I was in. Uh, Access Hollywood, E Entertainment. Ho- the, I was in People <coughs> Magazine. Crazy things that I never expected. I was 24 years old. So you were still an amateur, and you got into the into the movie. Had to happen because of the gym that you trained at. So it's because I trained with Hector. Heck, she came to Hector to work with him, and then he partnered me with her, and then we just developed a relationship. And I think I was just really open with her, and I guess the connection. Like I, I have a really good way of connecting with people. So she just asked me questions, and I answered them, and she felt the connection with me. So she mm-hmm. she worked with other females, like in the ring, and she even worked with some guys. But yeah. I think with me, she just felt that, you know, that comfortability oh, part cool, aspect yeah. of it. And um, you know, we I kind of shared my life, but I was always an open book. Like if yeah. you ask me a question, I'm going to be honest. That's just me. You know, I never thought about. I don't. I never really care. Like I never second guess things really. Mm-hmm. And I had been through so much at such a young age. Like I went through depression. I went through an abusive relationship. That's how I got into boxing. So I had been through domestic violence. I've been through all this stuff that I'm just like, well, here I am. I'm, I'm who I am. You know, and when people ask me like, oh, why'd you get into boxing? And when I did interviews, they asked me that. And I said, oh, I was in an abusive relationship and I had low, low self-esteem. So I went to the gym to better myself for him, which was a, a it was a it was more of like a, a regular fitness gym. Right. And then I went there and I started working out because I thought I was fat and ugly. And he, he actually was doing like bodybuilding and stuff like that. You know, like he was doing, he was really into it. He wasn't competing or anything, but he was like really into it. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, maybe if I'm more like him, I'll be better. And then I walked into the back and there was a boxing ring. 
And I was like, oh. And the first fight I'd ever seen, I was like 16 years old. It was when Tyson bit Holyfield's ear. <laughs> I love Tyson. <laughs> but he's like, it's like, it was crazy though, because it wasn't even like the boxing that, that, that I was captivated by. It was the rage because I was like, oh, I felt that. Yeah. Like, I've been that mad. That's why uh, people resonate, I feel like, with Cause authentic there's reality. people. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. Are you authentic? Like, is this real emotion? Like, yes. You know, like, his, Tyson's emotion was never staged. No. Like, no, a lot of it was this shit now. Yeah, completely yeah. authentic. It's, it's, organ- it's, it's like organic. It's organic, authentic. Like, And I love yeah. that. And that's why I'm always like, you know, I love. And I think that's where I didn't know how to be anything else. But I think it's really how I was raised. You know, I grew up partially in Mexico and, you know, I was, so I dealt with multicultures, you know, being from the United States, but then going to Mexico and being out there and out there, my family, like we had like nannies and they had like a, you know, my aunt had, I don't, they weren't, they were like family, they weren't maids, but they were nannies, but we cooked with the nannies, we cleaned with the nannies, like we were taught how to do everything. Yeah. You know, it was just so, and then I come back to the U.S. and it was like, nanny, you don't got a nanny, you know what I mean? Like it's so different, you know, but um, I think having all of that and just how I was raised really made me own who I am, you know? And I, again, I wasn't always like, I went through my trials and stuff like that, but sure. when I was asked these questions, when they asked me like, how did you do it? They're like, why? And I said, well, I was in an abusive relationship. I went to the gym. I walked in the back. I was like, wow. And then I just started boxing, you know? So pre-COVID, I mean, you had another chance at the title shot. I did, yeah. So right in May, I was supposed to fight for the WBA world title. And so I've, I've actually fought for every sanctioning body. I won the WBC. I lost my first world title fight, which was the WBA, at 130. I won the WBC at 126, and then I drew. I got a draw for the IBF at 122. So I feel like I haven't completed. You know what I mean? Like, I have unfinished business. And yeah. now my goal for, for this year is, or next year coming up, is to unify those titles. So those three belts, the one that I got, the one that I lost, and the one that I drew, I want all three of them at 122. And I'm ranked. I'm ranked number three right now by the IBF. Like, there's no reason why it shouldn't happen. The only reason it's not going to, well, it's, it's not that it's not going to happen. It's more like the politics of boxing right now, which is what we're dealing with. Cause you've got, it's really unfortunate. And, and even people n- not knowing about women's boxing, what you're seeing, what's happening in women's boxing would never happen in men's boxing. There are things that happen <laughs> that are unfair. And of course, boxing's, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's really shady business, but right now you've got in Europe, you've got no, no promoter promoting American fighters. They're all doing it in Europe. So you've got match room. So you've Who, got, who's the, who's the current? So the champions. Right now. So yeah. you've got at the IBF. It's Shanika Johnson, who should have never fought for a title. I think she's twelve and one or something like that. I'm thirty and two with thirteen knockouts. How old is she? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Do you think age has anything to do with like no. not giving you the shot? So or? here's the thing. So just this weekend, <clears throat> you had Jamie Mitchell, who's five and zero, oh, fought a girl for for defended her title, which you know I don't even know how she got that shot against a girl who's four and zero, oh, who's forty years old, and guess mm. what? The four and zero oh girl, because I did think it was age. I was like, is it because I'm 41? And I'm like, is it because I'm 41? That's what Why I would it? think. But I don't, it doesn't make sense. I think it's What's just. What's that process like? I know there's politics in, in every sport. But yeah. But like, how does, how does that process, what does that look like as far as setting that fight up? Well, right now <clears throat> I have a manager and I've actually been with my manager since I was 21. He was actually the first boxing coach that took me seriously and took me to my first amateur fight. Okay. So and it's then, something that they have to reach out to the other. So he's, and, he's and going to, he's setting it. Well, he's got to go through all that right now, the yeah. business part of it, but it's the rankings. It's really the rankings. I was ranked number one pre COVID, which I was yeah, supposed to fight for the title. Then <laughs> what happened? COVID hit. And then all of a sudden I disappeared out of the rankings and we're like, well, what happened? Yeah. Why are you not? Why was one? I not in the rankings anymore? And why was I not? Yeah. I should have been scheduled. And then all of a sudden these other girls from Europe started 5-0, and 4-0, and 6-0. And, and I'm like, man, I was 13-0 and when I got my first world title shot. And back then, there weren't as many yeah. women now. So I'm like... The only reason I, I say, well, I would think age, like, I don't know, is that at the end of the day, it's a business. Like, anything's course. a business. It's yeah. so like when I picture it, I picture that if they feel threatened by you, right, they know that, hey, eventually your time's coming to an end mm-hmm. right soon. So they feel like... If I have a younger fighter, mm-hmm. right, like, and I can put her up against more people and yeah. keep her alive, yeah. Yeah. you know, she's got a 10-year span yeah. versus I got this girl that mm-hmm. I know is going to destroy my younger fighter, yeah. right? But she's going to just win this and then retire and hang yeah. it up, yeah. you know? So, like, from a business standpoint. But but think about it. It's still a win-win because even if you're 5 and 0 girl or you're whatever, it loses to a 30 and 2, that's not – the thing is it's undefeated nonsense, it's still like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. you, come 30 on. and 2 stands more impressive than a 5 and 0. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and 13 knockouts. 100%. And, you know, and, and it, four it for does. three world titles, one, two of them. Like, but then if right. you like totally Undefe- annihilate undefeated this girl, or like, not. 
You one, you could take away her undefeated record. They yep. know that, so yeah. they're counting that. Two is okay. Now it's like I got to build her confidence back up. Is she going to be the same person after that fight? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. some people, when they get their first loss, but that's look at when Ronda you know Rousey. If they're a champion. Exactly, but see from a business yeah, standpoint, yeah, 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 yeah. right? No, like you're saying. you're coming from the love of boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people do it. You're coming from the love of boxing, but. Yeah. The people that are putting these things together, yeah. they're looking yeah. at dollars on the board, yeah. like numbers. Yeah, they're yeah, number yeah. people yeah. at the end of the day. But, but think about it. But what is this? But the fans are getting like a disservice because women's boxing, these girls, I'm sorry, they're they're good. They're not as good as, you know what I'm saying? The girls that have this experience. Yeah. Like I'm fundamentally, I'm I'm better than these girls because they haven't had enough time in the game to be better sure, than me. Yeah. So it's like you're not getting the true women's boxing you know what i mean you're getting what you think is oh these women are oh they're gr-. like i hear them saying like oh man did you see that i'm like that was not great but then i say it and like oh you're a hater i'm like no i'm not i'm just being honest with you like i can say hey that girl's good or i can say mm, like there's a lot of holes in their game because they don't have the experience even the people are riding experience. that money wave right now too yeah. like that's what you're seeing with boxing in general, like the oh, Jake sure. Paul fights, yeah, like yeah. the yeah. gimmick fights, their money fights. Well, they're looking. A lot of them are looking for like, <clears throat> and again, Instagram has a lot to do with it. They're looking for the followers, and they're getting the a lot of these girls who are who's showing gonna, up in lingerie at the way. Who's going to bring, who's gonna bring stuff, the views? Yeah, you know, and I get it. I mean, that's and and I'm like, oh yeah, one girl I seen. Did you see that she just flashed her tits after the fight? Oh, that was the bare knuckle. Yeah, it was, but still. Did you see that? They're sending that shit like, went viral. And it's hard. Yeah, she knocks this girl out, and, and then, then just gets up on the thing, just pulls her tits out. It was a pay per view. Bro, it went. It was yeah, a pay per view, uh, bare knuckle. Yeah, bare yeah. knuckle. Box. It just—it's so hard because, like, and this is where my age comes in. I think where I'm sitting there and I'm like, I just—that's just. And listen, I'm all about like whatever you wanted to do. It. I, I'm not gonna do it. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sell myself out and and sell myself that's, to that. That's essentially what these promotions are doing. Yeah. Is they're selling, exposing. Out. They're mm-hmm. selling, of course. Yeah, because, like you, we really want to know. Like back in the day, it used to be the purpose of a champion was. A, none of that mattered. Money mm-hmm. didn't matter. It was who's really the best yeah, in the world. Yeah, who's fighting? Who's putting taking those fights? Who's yeah? yeah. Who's like ready to go out and prove themselves? Mm-hmm. You know, and like now it's like, it's strategic. More oh, than everything. Anything, yeah, you know what I mean. But I think it's strategic for this for the European because again, why is Clarissa Shields, who's an Olympic a two-time Olympic gold medalist, going to Europe to fight to defend her title? How come the United States they're not promoting her in the United States? Why is you know um, her? Even Michaela Meyer, Alicia Bamberg, like these were all Americans going over to Europe. Like they're not giving. This they're is not, just a money thing. They it's the money, but they're not doing anything for because the promoters out here aren't doing Who's anything the, for who us. Who's the promotion? It's though. Matchroom. It's oh. Eddie Hearn. But we have promoters here that could do, but they just don't. And they're like, oh, women's boxing doesn't sell. That's bullshit because it sells in Mexico. Even the draws. I mean, my manager could give you all the stats and everything, but like when Mexico was huge. Women's boxing was huge in Mexico for years. For years, Jackie Nava, you know, Maria Juarez, like all that. I was fighting in Mexico, too. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be a, a woman athlete, especially in a sport that, mm-hmm. you know, obviously. Well, it seems like it's going one of two ways now. It's either like either you got to like you're too feminine. Like when I first started out, people didn't take me seriously because I was too feminine. So they look at me like, oh, you don't look like a fighter. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> now it's like, oh, well, if you're not. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't, this is where I get frustrated. This is where I'm just so honest. I'm like, I don't freaking know what they want anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like first I'm too feminine. Then I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Or I'm, I'm too feminine. So I can't be taken seriously now. I'm not naked enough. So I can't be taken seriously. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, yeah. so, and I get super animated because I get so frustrated. I'm like, I just want to punch somebody in the face. Because like, then again, on. it boils down to, it's not about boxing. No. It boils it's like, down to, no, it's again, a about, show. It's and it's views. sad. And it's like, but you know what? This is where I've, I think my age and my maturity have come where I'm just like, you know what? We're gonna go out, and I'm gonna do. I know my team. I know everybody's gonna do their best to get me and get me that position yeah. to get those belts. And you know what? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I know I did my best. I know I know right now what I'm capable of. Like this is the first time in my life. And mind you, think about what I've been through. I went through depression. I went through you know everything, the abusive relationship, all the stuff that I've gone through, losses, you know everything to be like you know what? I'm whole now. Like I'm whole. I know who I am. Whether this this doesn't define me. Whether this happens or not doesn't make a difference because sure. I am so sure of who I am that I don't need to walk in a room and have everybody know me. I know me, and yeah. I know what I've done, and I know who I am, and you know to, what I had to overcome to get it. To get these fights to come to fruition, how how long in advance would you need to train for them? Um, I mean, you stay pretty sharp. No, so. yeah, yeah, I stay. I mean, I you're st- in shape for sure, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Well, she's as far taken as fights to stay fresh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. most of the fights that I, I feel like the fights that you're taking. I mean, yeah, it's. Well, it's like, could they tell no you brainer. you got you got a fight yeah. for one of these belts in January? I'll and, go now. You, you oh, I'm right, not right. Like, I mean, give me give me six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. 
for like that's the thing that's where I'm at now. So we went to Dominican Republic and it was supposed to be like a stay busy fight, but it's like you know like I'm so tired of these stay busy fights. Like I fought a fight I hadn't fought for two and a half years. Is that just basically a fight like just to stay busy for no so, yeah, reason? Yeah. yeah, I mean it's not no reason like it's it, to stay the, prepped, fresh. Yeah. And at the end right, of the but day, it's for like, no title, no, 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 no. It's 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 literally like she's saying, just like to stay like busy, like, like just like to stay like an exhibition fight. But well, yeah, but we don't want like I don't want a girl like my manager's not gonna put me in there with somebody that I'm gonna walk through because right. what's the point? What's the point? You know what I'm saying? Like I want a challenge. Like, that's to keep me sharp. Yeah. You know, so I fought, after two and a half years, I went in and fought in May in New York. And I fought against a legit contender. Like, she's fought for, like, five world titles. She's active. She's younger than me. You know, like, I'm more skilled than her, but it was going to present a challenge because I'm 40. I'm in my 40s now. Right. And I am I hadn't fought in two and a half years. You know, so Jerry Cooney, who's a former world champion heavyweight, he said to me, he was like, oh, how are you going to feel in the later rounds when your legs get tired? I was like, I'm not a man. Like, <laughs> it's different. Like, no offense, but you guys, it's different. Women don't, we don't lose testosterone. Like we don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's so different. Like yeah. my endurance isn't going to go. Like I don't know what you're talking about. But women, as far as power, it's different. The men have more power because of how they're, you guys are. You guys yeah, are built. Any, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like to I'm an, not trying to, to be extent, a man. Your age, you know? your age might even might help me come to your advantage. I think it does. Yeah. And I'm trying, but this is the thing. Like how many 40 year olds do you see that are fighting right now? But it's been done. Alicia Ashley was 48, and she actually, she my manager managed her. She was a stable mate of mine and a sparring partner. She was 48, and she they were saying, oh, how Bernard Hopkins was the oldest man to, or oldest person, fighter to have a world title. No, it was her. And they had to argue that. My manager brought that to their attention. Are she you was trying to get just records. like direct to a title fight? Are you trying to find, fight just anyone that's ranked just to kind of get some No, I want to fight for a title. I've done enough. So you want to go right for the... If these girls are 5-0 and oh fighting for titles... I, I got to continue. From what like a gotta, strategic standpoint, though, like you don't think just no. to get, no? I'm that confident <laughs> in, in, in myself now and where I'm at and with the current champions right now. I don't underestimate Not from them. a confidence level. I'm saying from just like a to get some eyes on you level. Like, hey, I'll take anyone that's ranked. Just give me a fight and like, let me show you that I'm, I, I should mean, be number one, I, not number three. I mean, but they, they know that. They can look at tape. They can look yeah. at, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. What's like, your manager saying though? Like, is he, are they confident to get you the title? Well, right or? now we actually got, we, we were in, they're in, they were in, they're in discussions right now about it, you know, about, so I'm like, listen, just, you know, cause I'm like, I'm just, I've been doing this for long enough. Like how much more do you have to prove yourself over and over and over again? It's like, it's almost, it's almost like it becomes demeaning to a degree. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, that's how I would feel like. I get what you're saying, like the stay fresh, like the fight in DR, but it's like you've already proven yourself so far. So I feel like the staying fresh, they, they genuinely, I feel like staying fresh fight is more for mental health than it anything. It is. Yeah. I think it's like a thing. Yes. Because if you're stagnant yeah. for a year and yeah. you've been training for a year and you're like, mm-hmm. well, what the fuck am I doing? You start to think, what am I doing this for? Yes. And then that fight gives you like a more of like, but I've okay. been the confidence too. That's what I'm but saying. Do you know how many times but that's I've what I'm saying. Now when you've done yeah. this so many times. So many times. It's like a negative effect almost. It's like because this is it's dumb. like this is disrespectful. Like that's I'm it. fighting a where, where could these fights you know take place? Is it is it is it uh, oh, there's, I mean, anywhere I think, or, or based on where each fighter lives or well it depends on I mean it's also the negotiations and it depends on the promotion. Like I was willing to go to England and fight these girls. I didn't care. Like oh. I was like, where do I gotta go? Because these girls apparently, you know, I'll, I'll Where are they from? England. They're from England. Well, they're all, why was, so the girl, Jamie Mitchell, that just went out there and fought and just lost her title to the 4 and 40 year old. She went to England. Uh, why is a champion going to another country to fight that in that person's hometown? Like, could you imagine that happening with a man? Champ, the champions call the shot. That's Do what you know I'm what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. But you this is I mean? it. This is what I'm saying. This would never happen. Like what men yeah. are doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, well, they, they're fighting kind of, and wherever, I mean, but the end, I think it's wherever it's going to sell. Well, so again, I think that's the, the money thing part. too, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, if you're talking about men or like people at like just say like Canelo or whatever, right? Like he's gonna sell no matter who they mm-hmm, put up against mm-hmm. him. So he can he is the money draw, so he mm-hmm. can make the decisions. Mm-hmm. And the same thing goes like not from a champion standpoint, just even if you look at like we could talk outside of boxing, like if you look at Conor McGregor, he hasn't lost how many he's lost how many of his last Oh yeah, fights, but right? he can sell. Yeah. But he can sell. Yeah. So he still gets choice but even over is, a champion. But he, okay, so here's the problem. What happened in women's Again, boxing? Again, that comes down to views. But here's what happened before in women's boxing. Like I've sold, I yeah. fought on I fought on Miguel Cotto's undercard. I I can and I've I've proven it. But now they're like, okay, well, like, can you still sell or what? What I don't understand, like, or are they not giving us the platform to sell? Because Conor McGregor got the stage. If yeah. you're not going to give the female the stage to sell, 
I mean, Shane Mosley put me on. I co-featured to him. I opened for him fighting Mayorga the second time. Guess what? We did a media tour. We went to ESPN. I did it in Spanish. I did it in English. We did a whole, and it sold. Yeah. I sold too. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put me you as the co-feature. You did some commentating for a while. In Spanish, I did commentating right? for for Top Rank. I commentated for ESPN <laughs> in Spanish. Um, I've done, yeah, I've done, I've done a ton of that stuff. And I had a podcast. Like I've done TV work. I did MTV's Made. I was a maid coach. Um, did all that comedy so after, hopefully after you're the gonna... movie. Yeah, after the movie, from, that's when from it, the movie. But you, you know did? why? Again, that's because when the media came yeah. and they interviewed me, they were like, "Oh, like they liked my personality. They saw that I was marketable." Oh, they you liked, did made for MTV. Yeah, I was a maid I coach, remember that show. and I was nominated toughest maid coach in two thousand eight. I was I was a vegan at one point, and I was I was a one, top one hundred sexiest vegetarians with PETA. Really? Yeah, like I've done. A, I was in Veg News. Like I've done a lot. Of, a lot of these things. You know what I mean? But this is like. How long are you giving yourself to like fulfill this title a year. shot? A one year. year. One year. My forty third birthday will be a birthday party and a retirement party. So I feel like the way you've positioned yourself now, with like <laughs> she's got it planned out to with the like, day. Yeah, working with Phil, yeah. right? Obviously, yeah. and like where you've positioned yourself is kind of just for the hopes to kind of are, yeah. are just to fulfill 100%. this, right? So yeah. like, what's the goal after you know mm-hmm. post retirement? Yeah, the post retirement. What's the goal after that? Well, I mean, you're trying not to even think that far ahead. I mean, there's other opportunities that I have that are there, you know, that have been presented to me and stuff like that, like other business ventures and things like that, that I can go on, you know, but um, I'm working on a script right now. I'm working on a movie right now. I'm actually going to New York next week. I'm a co-producer for for a film. Um, It's it's a short. That's why I say that because I feel like there's a lot of things. With your history, you're like what you're doing now is Mm -hmm. just. It's perfect. Yeah. You know, but like you could be doing like yeah, there's tons so of much more. Yeah, yeah, there's tons of things. And I feel like, but again, you know, you know, my faith, you know, and God, like I wear it on my, on my, on my wrist, you know, you know, God has a plan for my life and he always has. So I can plan whatever I want, but he's going to let me know what I'm going to do because his plan is always bigger than mine. And I never thought I'd be sitting here talking and telling you the things that I'm telling you right now. And we're going to manifest it. You're going to get the title shot. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be there. <laughs> yeah, we'll go. I'm going to definitely be there. Come, yeah. Even if it's in England, we'll go. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think, but that's the thing. Like, I want people, and I, I like the curiosity because people meet me, they talk to me, and they're like, I want to see you fight. Like, and to see me fight and to feel my fight, like, because I'm a very passionate person, and I give. Your, your fights are exciting. Myself. Even yeah. watching you spar is exciting. So now imagine in an arena oh. when I fight you're, you're, and the energy. You're always moving <laughs> and. You know, it's there. The energy's yeah. there. Yeah. You know, yeah. even just in, I even see the competitive edge that you have fighting or sparring, excuse me, some of these bigger girls. Yeah. Like you're not yeah. scared to get in there. Some no. of these girls that you're sparring is like, yeah. they're definitely, they yeah. come in and I'm like, man, that's a big You're talking girl. about the freaking, uh, almost one like girl came five, in, ten. What was <laughs> she, this girl? She came she, in, she's a Russian girl uh, or something. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. girl is not fucking. Yeah. And they were like, oh, she's, one, so it was funny. They said, they, so this girl comes in, she's like, oh, she's 130, she's 135. I was like, and she walks in, she's 135. I'm like, this girl's not 135. Yeah. She's 5'10. There's no way she's fighting at 135. I was like, and she's a southpaw. And I looked she at Derek. She was 150, easy. 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 And she was like, I looked at her, I was like, this is a big girl. And I was like, but then see, with that situation, for me, like, I have to fight. So, like, she was green. You know, she didn't have much. She had amateur experience. She wasn't pro experience. So, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to punch you. Like, now I'm not going to work with you. Because most of the girls I'll work with. And I know when I hurt them, like, I don't capitalize on the hurting. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's a sparring. You're not, you don't want to do that. So, like, you know, I always, and if, if I get, if I yeah, hit but them. she came in there with a chip on her shoulder, Oh, too. for sure. Like, I seen it. Oh, for sure. I, was I knew like it. like, telling Derek, go get the pop. <laughs> it, was getting, it was getting like heated in there. I came back to the corner. I was so mad. And it wasn't at her. I was just mad at the whole situation that I came back to the corner and I looked at him. I was like, I was like, fuck this bitch. <laughs> like, <I'm> so mad. <laughs> but, For people that don't know, like, what is it like sparring a bigger person? Like people not in the fighting game. Like how big of a difference? It's it's well, my experience is what carries me. So I understand. So when I was younger and I would have to get in there with bigger girls or guys. It's just, it's like a puzzle. It's like this puzzle. And it's, and that's where the emotional maturity comes in because, because it's like a puzzle. You're like, you don't want to get frustrated. You don't want to get emotional because then you lose your cool and you lose your strategy, you know, and you got to listen to your coach in the corner. You can't let those moments, you can't go in there thinking like, well, they're bigger than me. So it's okay. It's not okay. Like I can't lose a round. Like I go in there every round that I want to win every second of every round, right. but it's got to be done with strategy. I don't go in there. It doesn't, it's not emotion. That's why, like, I laugh with that big girl when I came back to the corner. I mean, I had to have a little bit of emotion in there because I had to turn on the fight in me you because she was so much know. bigger. Yes, yeah, and like I had to spank her. Yeah, we call that spanking. Sometimes them be... Oh, uh, well, no, it's not. Be well, they could be, yeah. 
but that's you, not always an advantage. I mean, they have a longer what a longer. When reach you're talking about two <laughs> skilled people that are training, if they have a longer right? reach, so like, that's probably a disadvantage. If you're talking about like a bigger person that has no training and no skill, but when you're talking about two skill, people that are skilled, big difference. Yeah. It's a difference in in the yeah, power, what they can endure. Not only yes. a lot of people think about power, how hard they can <clears> hit, <throat> but it's how much of your stuff that they can absorb, mm. right? Because they're used to fighting bigger people. Yeah. So like there's, you got to remember, they're not taking as much power from this person. Mm -hmm. Like the perfect example was like the Canelo fight with uh, Bevel. Oh yeah. Right. Like Canelo went in there. If you look like Canelo, definitely skill wise, I would think of course. Canelo's yeah. like but he walking was, all yeah. over him, but he just couldn't hurt the guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. No matter how many times he was hitting him, no matter how much he was walking forward. Mm -hmm. And then mentally that starts to play a part on you. Like, you know, I've hit how many people with this shot before, and they fucking felt it. And that's what I'm saying. You can't lose <coughs> the you can't lose the strategy based on right. that. You know what I mean? So like, whether you're sparring or you're fighting or you're just like, no matter what, like, and that's my goal in every sparring session really is to just get the job done and do it the best that I can that's and right. listen to my coach in the corner. And there's just so much that goes into it because even with like trusting your coach, like you have to trust what they're saying. Like, you have to go back to the corner because, and especially as a veteran fighter, it gets a little bit tough sometimes because I have my own way of thinking and I've been doing it for so long that Derek will say something and I'm like, mm. like, yeah. at that point now I can be like, mm. but then I have to be like, all right, don't stand in your own way, Maureen. Like, he sees something you don't see. That's where the connection between you and your coach is really important. And you've got to be like, and they have to not train you with ego because there's a lot of coaches out there that are like, and I've gone through it with a coach where they were like, they knew I was strong and they knew that I was like a pit bull and they were just like, oh. And they just threw me in there, and it wasn't about strategy. It was, like, showing me off like I was some kind of, like, a show horse. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it sucked because I got – I didn't get hurt, but I endured some shit I didn't really need to. Sure. You know, where now I'm so – and you know this. I'm so defense-minded. And that's another thing. Like, I told uh, Antonio Tarver. I had a call with him, and we were talking and just talking about everything. And I said, you go find – I said, watch me train and watch my style, and you find me another female that fights like me. I was like, I'll, 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 I'll bet you. Yeah. I'll put money on it. Find me one that fights like me. You're not going to find one. Because I've developed this style, and when people see it, they're just like, because it's so like, you know what I mean? Oh. It's, it's like yeah. people are like, like, how do you do that? And it's like I'm dancing, you know, because I dance salsa, you know, like I'm, mm. I'm Latin. So I've taken this, but I've studied. Your cardio must be insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It is. How many of those was you said? 32 and 30 and 2? 32 and 30, 30 and 2. Well, I'm 32, one draw, one no contest, 13 knockouts. 13 knockouts. I was going to ask you how many uh, knockouts. Yeah, 13. Yeah. But those come from like wearing them down too. I mean, yeah. I've knocked a girl out cold. I knocked two girls out cold, but the rest of them are just body shots and they just can't stand. Yeah. They can't handle the pressure. They just don't get back up. Because I pressure, but now I pressure with head movement. And that's the hardest thing I was Your telling Your head movement's insane. Uh, like, yeah. that's why it's fun to watch her spars yeah. because it's just. It's nonstop. Yeah. And like there's a big difference. Like even just from like how fast that person's gonna gas out mm -hmm. from how much they're missing from like and that's how many extra it. punches are they throwing before they make contact with you. And that's the strategy. <clears throat> the strategy is it's, and then it's also them. mental. Because yeah. <laughs> then they're like, I can't hit this person. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I've had girls miss six punches. And that takes a lot out of you, right? Miss it does. Every, every and it also punch. mentally and physically takes a lot out of them because yeah. then they're like because then they stop throwing. Especially if they're getting <laughs> countered. Yeah. That's you know, that's even it, yeah. another one. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm missing and every time I'm missing, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm catching one. Yeah. It's like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And they try to yeah. break your rhythm. So it's like a dance. Mm -hmm. So they're trying So they're trying to figure out your rhythm. And I like that I'm a boxer puncher. So I can box and I can stand in the pocket and move my head and fight you on the inside. So when you have a fighter like that, you're like, well, shit. Like, what's going to beat this person? Right. Well, you know what's the strategy like, what, How do you figure that out? Right. And that's where, you know, I think that's another reason, like, even with styles, I think my style makes for really exciting fights no matter who it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's just, it's my style, you know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm, uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to my plan and my goal and what I want to do, but, like, I can't, I don't want to put, like, you know, look too far ahead. Yeah, you know, I, I say, oh yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, listen, I. That's what I was saying. If you look past it, and no. it's almost like you're saying it's not gonna happen. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, fuck that. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. This is the goal. Yeah. I'm all and in. And it's, but it's so true because I really can't. I know that I have ton of opportunity, and I'm and I'm grateful for the opportunity because of the positions that I put myself in. Listen, my dad wanted me to go. I went to college. You know, I got my degree. I was an English major. I minored in speech communications. My dad wanted me to become a lawyer. He wanted me to be a cop, go into the DEA, or go to law school. My brother became a pharmacist. Did everything my dad said. Guess what? He's no longer a pharmacist, and now he owns a welding business because he found his passion. I know you say, too, um, not to cut you off, that mm -hmm. you sacrificed a lot 
to the sport. And I think a lot of people don't realize that yeah. from a woman's standpoint. Because a guy, like, we can go do everything and still have that family. And, yeah. you know what I mean? Still have, like, our kids and our wife and everything at home. Yep. But when you're a woman, you're expected be, to hold that other side be down. Harder, yeah. So you're giving yeah. all of that up to fulfill this you know, dream of yours. Well, I, I gave up, I gave up a lot. Of, I gave up getting married young because I remember I lived in the Bronx. I moved to Brooklyn. I moved from Brooklyn to Jersey, Jersey to Mexico, Mexico to California, California to Florida, all for my career, all for mm. boxing. When did you move to Florida? 2019. 19. Yeah. My parents were retired out here. My brother moved out here. My brother moved out here when he was 24, when he was, he finished uh, pharmacy school. He moved out here, became a pharmacist. I mean, where else are you going to go, right? Yeah. Florida, like, yeah. <laughs> become a pharmacist in Florida. The capital of the yeah. world. Yeah. So he did it, and um, my parents, my mom and my dad bought an apartment out here, so they were going to eventually retire here. Mm -hmm. But like I said to you, like, for me, it was like, my life was led not by me. Like, it was just opportunity that presented itself, and I just prayed about everything. Even moving to California, I tell people, like, it was the hardest but the easiest decision I ever made in my life. I went out there, and I knew nobody. I mean, L.A., I knew people, but I knew nobody in Oxnard, California, Ventura, California, where I moved. Mm -hmm. I knew two people, and not really well. I had a nutritionist that I'd work with out there. You went out there specifically to For train? boxing. Well, it was really to overcome depression. I had seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. and I was medicated. They medicated me. I mean, this is all... Seasonal what? Seasonal affective disorder. And what is that It's exactly? called SAD. So the serotonin levels in my brain... Would, I had a chemical imbalance. I have it. Okay. it. The serotonin levels in my brain would drop during the winter months. Really? And I had it since I was a child. So when I was 14, I was mixed diagnosed bipolar. And they put me on lithium when I was 14. Then they put me on Depakote, Lamictal, tri I was on everything, Prozac. Like, they put me on all these mood stabilizers. I was literally, like, it was crazy. And um, I had been suicidal multiple times while I was on it. And um, it was really bad. So I would always go to California. My aunt lived in Los Angeles, so I always go out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I started realizing, like, the sunlight was helping me. Yeah. So when I was, it was in 2011... Um, I just decided like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm, I think this is the time now. It's like, I don't want to be on the medication anymore. I need to, I need to go. So I had the opportunity to move to California. I moved to California. I got off the medication and I had boxing. Uh, ever since then you've been, you've been good. Yeah. Yeah. No medication. No I've medication. been off sick, but now I'm in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm out here and there's still sunlight. You not, know, like I'm having, okay. Not having winter helps, I guess. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's but you hard know what? to be I, depressed I, in Florida. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, the heat's kind of. Unless you're not walking. California, I mean. I mean, it's either Florida. California's nice. It's either California, Florida. Florida. But you know what? The yeah. people. You moved back to Mexico. I don't know about you, but me, yeah. the people ruin California. But where were you? I've been to a few places in California, but LA's definitely horrible. Okay, I can see that, but Oxnard and Ventura County? Like, Ventura, just Ventura, Oxnard, like. I went to Rancho. That Rancho was, that okay. That's LA. That's LA. That's still LA. But you're I'm talking Ventura County. So Where's that? Where I lived in Oxnard. So Oxnard and Ventura. It's like twenty miles uh so south of Santa Barbara. Oh. It's still Southern California. Oh, County? No. That's the oh. opposite direction. Opposite. We're going towards Santa Barbara, towards like it's going north. Like you're going north. So Got like you. um Camarillo, I'm trying to think what else. Thousand Oaks. Like I don't know if you ever heard of any of those places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like you go through the valley, then you come out. And I mean, I loved living there. Like that's honestly like, I I can go back there. I do go back when I go back. I yeah. mean, there that was like my home. Like I rediscovered myself there. I healed there. I just became such a better woman, a better human, a better boxer. Just being there. And I believe it was because the pace in New York was so fast that I started losing myself in that rat race. Yeah. And when and I think the depression, the stress, all of that. And then when I went to California, I I forced me to slow down. It forced me to really heal and look at myself, and I mean, it was you know. I mean, all these New Yorkers are moving here now. I How know. do you feel about that? So, <laughs> so funny thing is, when I was in California, I was in California for eight years. Goddamn traffic! Well, oh, like that's now. Yeah, <laughs> it's worse now with the holidays. I mean, they can't drive. First of all, I mean, I feel like just you know. Listen, man, give us our state back. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's nice, it's, it's nice when I see them, like I can like reconnect and be like, oh yeah, but then I'm like, uh. I miss just seeing them during the winter, you know? Now yeah. they're here to stay. Oh yeah, that's different. It's like, yeah, you I, know, I, know. I know. And I tell everybody, I'm like, I was here pre COVID, so I'm not one of those. Yeah, 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 I'm one of those. But listen, but so when I was in California, like I was in California for eight years. So I was like, more, I realized I was, I realized I was an asshole when I went to California. Because I was like always mad at everybody. And I'm like, and people are like, why are you so mad? I'm like, am I? Like, I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm just a New Yorker. <laughs> like, it's just my yeah. attitude, just who I am. So when just I came, yeah, so <laughs> when I came here and um, I was in a parking, and I came to visit, and I was in New York and I went to visit my family and I was in a parking garage and they beeped the horn. I literally jumped because you can't beep horns in California. 
Like people don't beep the horn at all. So oh, I was so used New York, to they just say on it. Oh yeah, that's and that's what happened. The guy beeped the horn. <laughs> the I horn literally jumped on. and I was like, and even out here though, like the horn be- I'm like, man, like it's wh- different. Why is everybody so- and then I realized it starts triggering me. People are in a rush to go nowhere. I realize that. Yeah. A lot. They just wake up in a bed. Like they'll mood. be fucking flying and then you're like at the same red light as them and you're like, What's up? But bro? you but you start yeah. to like but I feel like I started to like fall into that too because then you start feeding off it and then you start realizing you become that a little bit. I th- I think the states like we're talking about like you're talking about California or Florida and stuff like you realize where it's like a mixture of different cultures and people there's always like that that asshole vibe that aggression because you have a hundred different opinions a hundred different ways that we like oh, to yeah, move, yeah, yeah. right and it creates that tension. Because it's yeah. like, so one, you got this chill guy going slow. Then you uh-huh. got you that's from New York that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yo, man, I got somewhere to yeah, go. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Get the fuck out yeah, of my yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, if, like, yeah. if it was just everyone moving slow or everyone yeah, moving that's fast. The that was California. Florida. That's what I'm yeah, saying. That was it. Yeah. Florida's the mix now. You got The yeah. melting pot like creates that. like. And it was interesting because I had like, it was like, I had like culture shock when I went to California. Cause like, you know, I'd never been around so many Mexicans <laughs> unless so I was in Mexico <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm Mexican. And I was just like, you know, and I was raised around like this melting pot in New York. So when I'm out there, I was like, and I remember going out there and just seeing the fields of like yeah. the strawberry field, like all these, and I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Like there's not enough buildings. Like there's no city. That's it's a like, big change coming from the Bronx. Huge. And I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in, and I worked in Manhattan. I worked at, um, at one Penn Plaza. You know, I had an office, you know, up there. And I was just like, all of it was just that's different. Like a, that's like a complete 180. It was a culture shock. Yeah. But you know what? It just helped me to just rediscover myself. And the other thing, like, and it's funny, like, you know, you guys are reinvent you. Like, I feel like I've reinvented myself so many times in my life. And I think that's what's amazing about being a woman. And, and not to say guys can't, but women just do it because it's just different. You know what I mean? Like, we hit these, like, we hit these places in our lives. Like, you guys can have kids till you're like 80 if you really wanted to. You know, we can't. So we have to. It's like I hit 40 and I didn't have children and it wasn't because I didn't want them. It was just because my life was, I was so focused on my career. So consumed, yeah. Yeah, and I just felt like, and again, I dealt with mental illness. I was dealing with all these different things and I was like working on me and then last thing I knew, I'm like, oh my God, like my biological clock, like it's time. It's, it's gone. Yeah, and I think I had mentioned to you like, well, that's I had, why I brought it up earlier. Yeah, like a I lot had of people to don't like, realize that sacrifice. Yeah, and like I have to like grieve that. You don't have any regrets though, do you? This is where it's hard. I don't have regrets, but you have to, like, when you hit 40 and you're like, I have to grieve it. Like, I'm grieving that. And I have moments where I'm just like, because I never said, like, I don't want to be a mom. Like, I'm a mother. Like, I know that, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I know people like, oh, well, you can have kids later on. You can do this. And you can, I'm like, okay, that's nice. I can adopt this. All this stuff's great. But there's a portion of my life that I have to grieve right well, that's now. Why we, that's <laughs> like, <why. laughs> it's the facts. And I think it's healthy to admit yeah. that. I, mean, I, think I think a lot of people don't. You, you want to f- probably that's why you want to yeah. fulfill that three time so thing even more because yeah. it's like, I gave up all this, but I want to make sure I did it. In your eyes, it for it'd be worth it. This it yes. would be worth it, right? Yes. It would solidify that. You know, you know gonna, what I mean? Like I did it. I'm gonna tell you I something. I think that's a bad way to look at it though, too. But I mean, naturally, that's just a natural. But you know way what? It's, to look at it. I think that if it doesn't happen yeah. though, I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, again, I made peace with that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm always gonna be. But you know what? I you know what the, the biggest thing for me and I let's never, say it now. 2023 is the year that you get your belts and you get pregnant in the same year. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Derek that I'm calling it right now. Derek, watch. Derek's watching this having a fucking stroke. <laughs> He's fucking. <laughs> He's a grandfather Derek's right now. Derek's got a grandkid. He <laughs> just hit the fucking... She got three belts and triplets in the same year. <laughs> and, she, and, and he also heard, you can have kids till you're 80. He's sitting there going, <laughs> what, what the that? fuck? Yeah, he's going out yeah. back and, and oh, cutting his insides funny. up. That's so funny. <laughs> but you know, you know what the real thing is? Like, I've never felt... Like, you see these guys when they win these belts, right? And you yeah. see them crying and this... I want to feel that. I've never felt that. Like you were never... I never felt like that complete that accomplishment. Yeah. I never felt that that feeling of going through. And I think that I have to go through all this. And I think that at that moment, it's going to be that much sweeter because of all this shit that I've been through, all this stuff, all the, the bad's what makes the good. That's right. So good. But what I learned was like, I can't let boxing. And I think I said it to you too. I can't let boxing. I can't let the business of boxing make me hate boxing because that was happening. I was getting bitter towards the actual, like the actual act of boxing. I didn't want to be in the gym. I didn't want to hit the bag. I didn't want to see anybody. Yeah. I didn't want to watch the fights. And I'm like, why? Why are you letting this business? Why are you letting it control your emotions? Like <clears throat> you love to box. 
whether you fight, whether you don't fight, whatever you do, you're always going to be a part of the sport because you love it. You love the actual act of it. Even being in the gym, helping you guys, like just seeing people develop and grow and get something out of the sport, whether they fight or not. Right. You know, find their love for it, yeah, you know, yeah. and their connection to it. I love that. So there's I had lot, to there's learn. There's a lot more into it than just, you know, same with like bodybuilding. You don't have to compete to be in the sport, you know, like we're in it. Yeah. Same thing with fighting, boxing. It's a passion, and it's something as about long as it. You're, as long as you're around it every day, mm -hmm. you know, even helping mm -hmm. others. as you. But as there you comes a point where, like, if you're not healthy, though, you and a lot of fighters, when they retire, you know, they, they, they don't want to retire. They can't. They keep pushing. And people have asked me that, and that's the most frustrating. My brother said it I think it's that's me. just anyone with a competitive, you know, yeah. like, look at Brady. That's natural. Brady, yeah. Brady's like, fuck it, He's leave me. The now. wife can leave. The kids I'm can fucking go. not throwing in the towel. <laughs> <laughs> fuck like, yeah. everybody. She yep. can take everything. Yep. I'm still yep. playing. You but I think that's sad, though. There's something wrong there. Of course. I mean, like, it's not normal. No. And I think that there's, I mean, there's to be. Because he feels like that's all he is. You but know what I'm saying? That's sad. But you have to know that that's what he, in his mind, I, I see it. Like he's yeah. so obsessed with yeah. football that he feels like he is the sport. Yep. And that by giving it up, he's just. Who am I? Who am I? But that comes with, and that's why, like, you know, I love the balance. Like, that's why I've always done other things. Like, I've always worked. I've always, you know, school, everything that it's I've always too, done. It's important, too, so you don't get burned out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think yeah. a lot of these guys, too, like, they don't know when to hang it up. That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah. it's either you retire when you're on top or you just keep going and then you just watch your whole career diminish. Like Brady. This year, he was terrible. Yeah. Right, you know, and then you end up getting hurt, and then you're in a worse bodybuilders. Position. It's happened to uh, boxers, I'm sure. Oh, fighters. of course. They just oh. don't know when to say, you know, this is it. It happens too <clears throat> many times. Yeah, and they keep taking fights. They keep competing. They keep playing. But that becomes with this this addiction quality. And I tell people, like, you know, I do motivational speaking, and I everything. I'm like, listen, there's no difference between you and me. I said, I just do something that's a little extraordinary. You know, I said, and, and I go to therapy. <laughs> Because I punch people in the face for a living, and I like it. Like, that's not normal. And then they laugh because they're like, yeah. I'm like, but that's okay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's things like find what you're passionate about. Like, yeah. But just own who you are. Like, I'm totally okay with it. I'm not going to sit here and lie about who I am and what I've done. Like, I'm not perfect. But it makes you live just a better life, you know, and having I that. And I, and I just don't want I want to be well-rounded. I don't want to end up like that. Like, even with relationships. Because, like, okay, why didn't I get married? Why didn't I have relationships? And I can't say, oh, it was all the guys. No. It was me. Of course it was me. Because yeah. I wouldn't give 100% and I expected 100%. And that's not fair when you're in a relationship. Right. You know, you can't do that if you don't have good communication. Like, oh, well, you could have found a guy to just support you. I'm like, listen, it sounds great. But yeah, when a guy's theory. in there and he's seeing me punch some girl in the face and then I got all these men and women coming up to me wanting my autograph, my picture, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, and they're be like. It's hard to be competitive and. It's tough. That's to why be. you got to transition your life once your competing stages is done and you transition to, you know. Having that realization, though, you get that when you get older, like. Like you're saying in relationships, like well, you I don't have wanna... to be willing. Yeah. Like you expect a hundred percent, but it's like, am I being a competitor at that level? No matter what sport it is, it's it's very selfish. Yeah, you have to be, and I don't want to, and I I want to get married. Like I'm, I'm like, shit, if I'm not gonna have kids, <laughs> I'm getting yeah. married. Damn it! <laughs> Listen, I better be at this wedding. <laughs> Hit it to the list. You got a lot going on I next know, year. Damn. Shit. I know. Shit. Triplets. Wedding. wedding. Should I get married first before the triplets? Nah. <laughs> it's great. It's 2023. You want 2023? I mean, you want the triplets listen. at the wedding. Said, <laughs> I've seen men breastfeed and children. Now, oh, yeah. right? You can <laughs> fucking do it any order you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, two flower God. girls, two it's flower like, girls and a ring bearer walking down the aisle. And oh, I've seen that in you. California. No. <laughs> Here we go. We got I'm no gonna alcohol. Gonna about I'm that. gonna hit you from left field. This podcast we, was so oh no. good too. <laughs> we ask every podcast. Yeah, we gotta, guest, I gotta pee bad. What's their favorite strip club? And just because you're a girl, we're not oh, gonna. I'm ask gonna tell you, you though. I, that's what I but want. But I performed at a What's strip club. What's your favorite strip club? It was. Uh, I got. I forgot the Is name. It, it was Florida? in Vegas. We have to ask. Oh, it's in Vegas. Shoot. So what happened was, I had tickets to the Triple G Canelo two fight. And I'd gone to one, and I was like, eh, I don't want to go to two. So we're like, shit, let's watch the fight somewhere where they have it live TV. So, like, nobody had it but the strip club in Vegas. And it's like a classy strip club. Spearmint Rhino. No, it wasn't Spearmint Rhino. Damn. Oh, if you said it, I would know. That's I got to ask one. my – I was with a girlfriend of mine and a couple of the guys. But I, I watched I guys get live dances. Until you said classy. And then I was like, I know no classy strip club, so I can't. In Vegas, a classy strip club? I mean, I thought it was classy. The girls were beautiful, and they were very athletic. One of them I was talking to, I was like – you look like an oh, athlete. Like, what do you play? Some of these girls, I mean, they're definitely athletic. Well, yeah, they're professional. I took. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Oh my goodness. I um. No, I but that pole shit ain't easy, bro. So I did a class. 
I did that a pole dancing class. Easy, bro. The girl, let me tell you, this girl had to be had to be like, I don't know, 160, 170 pounds, easy. And not fit. In heels. Like twirling and doing these things called like the martini glass. And I'm yeah, just like, I couldn't do anything. It's and I'm an athlete. I couldn't do any of it. Like it's definitely a skill. It's all technique. For sure. Yeah. I did two classes and I was like, no, I quit. I'm not that competitive. <laughs> but anyway, so I went to the strip club and I ended up doing the round card up there and stuff like that. I mean, I was dressed. I wasn't naked, but that was my strip club. So that's got a strip little club special, experience. special place special in my heart. I mean, that's a bucket list. Yeah. One down. Yeah. Three to go. Triplets. Wedding. Triplets. When's the last wedding. time you went to a strip club? Oh, no. That was that was it. Triple G Canelo 2. Oh, really? Guess we're going tonight. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take Maureen and Derek. <laughs> Derek will be hiding in the corner. Like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> She's going for the third third title here. Don't even fucking touch me. Don't look at me. You know what I mean? Like, she oh, punches no. people for a living. <laughs> no, he said that one time. We were this laughing about This is a firefight. He was like, he's, he said that, like, would you? I was like, don't test me. I think he's saying that because we, we went with Favad and his wife one time. Oh, okay. Like, I went with yeah, Favad yeah, 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 and his yeah. wife came. Yeah, yeah. So like we were telling Derek about it. Uh -huh. So I don't know if that's why, but I would just, maybe that sparked a light bulb in his head. Like, ah, maybe I could bring Marine one time. <laughs> uh, he never brought it up. Well, he didn't come. It was oh, okay. it was no, me he didn't bring it up about going. Oh, uh, I thought you just said he did. No, about going to the strip club. Didn't you say Derek asked you? No, no, he asked me about like how I would feel if I. Uh, forget it. It's like, yeah, that oh, one. Right. That one left that one. She's like, when was Derek at the strip club? I'm sitting here sweating like Derek's going to be texting me like, what the, and this you know? no, no. what the fuck did you tell Maureen? No. She was bipolar. No. <laughs> She's off her meds now. No. She refused to take them. No, we have a great relationship though. Like it's really like you have to, but especially like I think as boxer and coach, like we developed that relationship early yeah. on and then it kind of like, you know, I never thought that was going to happen, but it's like, it makes, but like, it, it, it figures. Like, my mom said it. Mom was like, it makes sense that it would take a guy like that. And he's so mild mannered and calm. Like, he's the yeah. opposite of anybody I ever dated. He's so mellow. Derek's Derek just is such super a great mellow. guy. He really is. He's, he's a good, I, tell him, I tell him all the time, like, you're a good man. Like, when you just, I observe he him. He is a good cause guy. Because sometimes I'm like, so like, eh, you know, and then sometimes I, I've learned as I got older, I sit back and I look at him. And I'm just like, man, like, because I know sometimes he looks back at me and, and how he feels about me, you know, like what I do and how I do it. But I look at him. I'm like, man, you're I just say it. I'm like, you're a good man. Like randomly, I just say it to him because I'm I don't know if he you know what Listen, I mean? Like, like I just want to be like, I appreciate like, that. Every so often that you meet like real genuine people mm -hmm. and like it's very rare. Yep. And Derek is yep. like a real genuine yep. person. Yep. Like that's just in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, like, he, I he feel is. that way since yeah. I've met him. Like, yeah. That's why me and him became close. Because yeah. I was like, dude, he's just yeah. one in a million. Like, you, don't, you don't meet somebody like that. Yeah. No, he, he really is. And he <laughs> just, but he's so, it's like he's so meticulous with how he does things. And he's got his own little, at first it would drive me crazy. Like I told you, I was going to train with him. And then I, I stopped training. I went and I trained with him one time. And I was like, oh, this guy's too slow. I'm like, I can't train with him. <laughs> you know, and then I went back to California. And then when I came back, I was like, all right, let me try it again. He is a good coach. I know he's got a lot of fighters. He worked with my friend, with Daya. Daya was my friend. You know, I'd been friends with Daya Davis for years. So I was like, all right, let me give it a try. So then I went back, and I was like, I, it was like, I didn't see it then. That what right. I saw then was like, oh, I need a guy like this to train me. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm like, this makes you think sense. he's like the complete opposite of you? Yes. Oh, no, he's definitely like, and, I, and not, without sounding like so cliche, like he's definitely the yin to my yang. Yeah, like for cool. sure. Because when you see us, like, and I mean, Kyle can tell you, like we're so different. Oh. Yeah, but I think that it's good for him too. Like, yeah, it's it good for it's, Favad's it's, told me that before. He's like, you know, Marine's good for Derek because Derek, like she's saying, he Derek's too humble. He'll never take. And what did for I anything. tell you? What did I tell you when I first met you? We sat in my office, and I told you that I said sometimes he's humble. You said it. You're like he's humble. I said sometimes he's too humble. He's too humble. Like he won't take credit for anything. Yeah. You could be like, oh, you trained this. Well, this person helped me, and there was an assist here. And, you know, yeah. he never wants yeah. to take credit. Yeah. And he doesn't like to ask for help. So it's like she brings that out of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he probably calms her down. Yeah. Like, and I'll, and I'll, but I've learned how to have the conversations. Because, you know, the conversations are like, you know, that's different. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes we're just like, you know, I get too fiery, and he's like too, like he'll just like. I've walked into a couple of those. Thank yeah. God. Oh, yeah. If, if oh, the boxing gym. Oh, there was two of them. Like I'm like, uh, I guess I'm training myself today. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've had. When yeah. You, you know when you walk in, when Marine's you feel, you hitting feel, the bag. You feel ah, the. You know, and, and 
And I'm just like, like the vibe, do. the vibe is off yeah, today. The vibe's yeah, off. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you, Maureen. No, thank yes, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot you. of fun. Thank we're we're going to talk it here now, guys. You've been introduced to the real million dollar baby. <laughs> soon to be billion. Yes, I like that. Million and, dollar uh, mom. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're going to babysit, all right? Give me a number. He's babysitting. He's got twins. Got He'll twins take them. Oh, God. My mother's a twin. I'm supposed to have twins, so I might have those triplets. Yes. <laughs>